Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Now we will talk about OD in educational institutions, uh, importance of educational institution for society and individuals uh, can never be overemphasized. So, content for this part of the session is majorly drawn from the work uh, conducted in the Ravi Mathai Center for Educational Innovation in IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, first of all, we need to recognize that there are so many lines of debate about educational delivery system in India. So, these debates are related to job orientation or job orientedness of the education. Education should it be for the community building or only for the earning living. There are also debates about character building with the traditional values or with the modern values. Debates are also about preparing job seekers or uh, job creators in our education system. We also see the debate and uh, very passionate discussion about emphasizing on the academics versus focusing on the many other aspects of the uh, development like values and skills etcetera. So, in terms of the policy related debates, uh, quality education versus making the basic education available to the masses, uh, this is also a very important debate. As a result of the different aspirations and the different espoused value of education, many subsystems have evolved in the Indian society. So, we see large number of government schools, we also see uh, state owned schools and the center government schools like uh, Navodaya Vidyalaya or KV. We also see emergence of the large number of or sometime they are the chain of the private schools. There are many other boards uh, in the in, uh, in the category of the international schools and we also you also and many of you might be surprised that in India there are still lot of gurukuls operating. They focus on the traditional wisdom along with and many of them are integrating the traditional wisdom with the modern education and they primarily emphasize on creating the job givers and preparing people for the self, self employment rather than uh, becoming a job seeker and there are more than 8000 gurukuls operating in India. We also see the emergence of the trend of home schooling. So, there are small groups also which prefer home schooling for their kids. So, as a result of the different positions in the debate uh, what uh, we mentioned in the previous slide, we also see the emergence of uh, different types of the school and education system in India. The first part of the session on OD in education sector is primarily focused on the uh, school education. If we look at uh, education system in India, we see two very important uh, historical features which have affected the design of the system. One feature is related to the ethos of the assembly line based system that was applied in the industrial era that came up in the industrialization, that came up with the industrialization. So, the features of industrialization like centralization, standardization, hierarchical top down management, a rigid sense of time, accountability based on adherence to the system, all these features are basically the legacy of industrialization process and uh, 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 legacy of the industrial era and that has also have entered into the education field. In India particularly, modern education system was erected by the uh, Britishers who are the co who colonized India for very long time and their primary objective 
was to prepare clerks or the class 3 employees who can carry out and take the instructions from their uh, uh, supervisors who are the who, who are either the Britishers or the uh, confidants of the Britishers and their job was just to see uh, just to interpret the rules and regulations and sometime implementing those. So, many features of the education system which are centralized sometime not very learning centric can be traced back to these two factors. We also see uh, changing conditions of school education in India. If you look at the government schools, there is a very massive role expansion of the teachers uh, working in the government schools. Efficacy of the teacher training is also under question. Infrastructure related issues are suddenly there. There has been many interventions, there has been many policy initiatives like operation blackboard and few others to provide the physical infrastructure, but still uh, a large number of schools are still lagging in the infrastructural demand and requirements for the proper education. There are also student related issues like enrollment ratio or learning outcome that can be related to actually governance as well as the uh, teacher related issue, but uh, learning outcome is also one of the important concern uh, in the education system in India. Having said that, we also need to recognize that there are lots of islands of the excellence in education system and particularly school education system we are talking about. If you want to know more about it, please visit the website of InShodh. This is uh, supported by FAERI, the foundation of the augmenting innovation and research in education and uh, this is hosted uh, in uh, I am Ahmedabad site, please have a look at it. This site has the comprehensive record of more than 1000 innovations in the field of education and many of them can be categorized as OD interventions. These are related to increasing the attendance of the uh, students increasing the enrollment ratio of the students, increasing their learning outcomes. This is a very, very rich repository and anyone who is interested in school education must have a look at it. If we categorize the OD interventions in schools in India, we can classify three types of OD interventions required in the school education in India. These interventions are related to governance. Uh, teacher development, public private partnership and that is for the ancillary educational services particularly. Now, we will look at all these three things in more detail. So, governance, governance meaning every institution should have a governing body that needs to be accountable to the stakeholders, but how the governance should take place, what are the prerequisites for uh, effective governance, even if you have body, we ha there are some prerequisites required. There are some, even if you have the uh, formal governing board, which has the representation of the different stakeholders, uh, there are some prerequisite to make this uh, governance system effective. And these uh, prerequisites are uh, having a properly identified and articulated purpose of the educational institution. We cannot develop only one or few actors in the system. So, governance should be geared up to enhance the overall education system, which includes parents, school teachers, school management, community within which that is school is located. There is a need to include obviously, uh, major stakeholders to have their perspective, because they are the providers of the insights about how to enhance the system, how, what are the measures, what are the indicators of the effectiveness of the system. Accountability also need to be uh, ensured, both in terms of the quantitative as well as the qualitative. 
So, that may include the connection with the teacher training system, the IT support system, the curriculum resource system etcetera, etcetera. Benchmarking of the institutions through review of the achievement of the purpose can be an excellent OD intervention, but for the benchmarking you need transparency in the matters of the institutional performance. In an environment of the constrained resources, institutions are accountable should be eligible for the special incentives. Institutions which are using the otherwise scarce resources more judicially, more judiciously and uh, more effectively must be recognized and uh, incentivized. Institutions that have honest intentions of accountability and are moving towards higher levels of outcome uh, also need to be incentivized. There can be a very significant OD intervention in terms of teacher development. The professional development system as such in country uh, have been much criticized for their inability to reach out to all those in need, the high cost they entails, uh, high cost they entail and the methodological and curriculum they use. We need to recognize that teachers can be the valued participants in the professional development. Why? Because in spite of facing the same contextual constraint uh, that all teachers face, there are some who are island of excellence and they are there across country, they are there in the private schools, they are, they are in large number in the government schools or public schools. So, drawing on their experience to develop a more relevant professional development curriculum and using new methodologies that combine internet with the face to face interaction to overcome the barrier of reach and cost, these are the desirable directions for the OD intervention in a, a teacher development field. What I just now mentioned the in show the website has large number of OD interventions documented and most of these case studies come from the government schools. Those insights which are nested in those case studies can be incorporated and a more effective curriculum can be designed for the teacher development. Third and very important aspect of OD intervention in schools can be public private partnership. We know that attention to non cognitive competencies in children in the public system is to be found only in the island of excellence. Structurally or formally the attention to the non cognitive competencies of the development of the students is very less in most of the schools in India. So, we need to we so there is a scope to enhance the public private partnership in that field. Given the lack of skills and capacities within the public system, the private public partnerships for the ancillary services that support the education can also be a very important avenue for this partnership. This can be done in monitoring process, IT support, part of the academic support, assessment of the educational outcome, assessment of the non cognitive skills like motivation, these can be best implemented through the public private partnership. They are performance based, there can be performance based contractual arrangement to ensure that, that part, this part, uh, this partnership delivers the desired result. It is not fruitful to argue about whether private schools are better or why government should not implement the ancillary services through its own machinery. Uh, a more open approach which recognizes that public schools are located in the disadvantages ecosystem and need support through relevant partnership with others, that approach can be very helpful in uh, strengthening the governance system, ensuring the proper measurement of the outcomes and also ensuring that some of the, edu some of the educational inputs being provided to the students, which are not covered in the formal education system now till now. Let us talk about the possibility of OD interventions in the institutions of the higher education. 
higher education system in India is also signified by uh, some of the I, uh, some of the island of the excellence and then a uh, large number of educational uh, systems working at the level which is very far or very below from the excellent from the level of excellence demonstrated by some of the uh, great institutions in India. OD intervention for the higher education must start with the proper diagnosis of the different streams like what are the what is the need of the nation, what is the need of the society, what is the need of industry and how education system or higher education system or higher education institution can meet those needs can and how the institutions of the higher education can help in meeting those needs. In order to provide that kind of uh, service or output vision for the educational system or the educational institution must be well articulated. According to that vision the administrative interventions for the learning center system should be introduced. Teacher training is also perhaps equally important in the higher education. Higher education teacher appointment happens primarily based on their research work or based on their academic qualification. Many of them may be effective as a teacher in the classroom with their natural flair or natural competency, but there is a possibility of uh, lack of that competency uh, in terms of engaging students in an interesting way and for that uh, teacher training has a enough scope. Uh, to be introduced as a OD intervention in the higher education field as well. Higher education involves not only dissemination of knowledge, but also requires knowledge creation. Knowledge creation happens in a typical uh, research related activities. Most of the research activities are primarily based on uh, modern science or primarily based on the content being created or knowledge being created in the western world uh, in last 200 years. That is certainly very valuable, very important and India's contribution is also there uh, in the development and the development of the contemporary knowledge. But a uh, country like India also has lot of tacit and explicit knowledge uh, retained or nested in its systems in their in its tradition. In order to become a knowledge based society, it is important to not only work on so called contemporary knowledge systems, but also harness the potential uh, of the knowledge nested in the traditions of this country. Industry academic interface is a very important uh, missing component significantly missing component in the higher education system in India and collaboration related OD intervention are very useful to strengthen the industry academic interface. In view of the large number of entrants in the uh, higher education system, India needs lot of interventions in the higher education related to technology. Technology can be very helpful in meeting the very fast increasing demand of higher education in India. There are some interventions worth noting uh, which are being started by MHRD or some other bodies uh, in the higher education. For example, academic leadership program is introduced uh, under the Mahatma uh, under the Madan Mohan Malvi uh, mission. TechQIP is again a very important initiative to strengthen the uh, human capacity and also the infrastructure in the institutions of the higher education. Appreciative inquiry based intervention can also be very helpful in uh, uh, making the education system to identify their own vision and systematically in working towards realizing uh, those mission in a collaborative in a team based uh, environment. 
some of the very powerful interventions suggested in the national education policy are related to governance, related to ensuring the learning outcomes, uh, related to uh, the, uh, the management of the education system and development of the management system. So, some of the key ideas about OD in the education fields are that society and industry focused diagnosis is important to strengthen the education system and educational institution. Governance uh, is a very important component in the OD in education field, whether it is a system or uh, education institution, Learn, making the system more learning centric, importance of the teacher development importance of the public private partnership in ancillary educational services, technology supported flexible system and creation of the flexible system, preparing our society to be knowledge and innovation centric society. These are some of the key ideas which must be considered when we are talking about OD in the educational field.